heavy rain overnight and more on the way tomorrow. I'll have your hour by hour forecast so that you can plan your Friday. How did this moldy food end up being served to Metro students? Oh, oh, my what? what Atlanta police are saying tonight about a woman tased off a front porch. Atlanta's mayor ready for her close up at the Democratic National Convention. Yeah, we want you all and you know what's up, so we about to take it up a notch. Yeah. Two teachers are adding the cool and back to school with virtual learning. Tonight, we find out what's popping with these two internet sensations. But first, lots of rain today and even flooding in some parts of town. This video just into our newsroom from Briarcliff Road. It's really an example of just how hard and fast the rain fell. Meteorologist Ella Dorsey, you've been tracking it all day. Is it still falling? It is still falling north of the city. That's where we're seeing the heavy rain now lifted through Metro. It's now up into the mountains, areas like Helen, areas like Lake Burton, seeing very heavy rain, some thunder and lightning as well. All through Lumpkin County, Dahlonega area, and even over into Gilmer County, where there is a flash flood warning. Okay, this is out until 1.15 a.m. That's for the next four hours to the south of LJ. It's really the south uh, west corner of Gilmer County has seen four inches of rain and the rain will continue to fall here over the next one or two hours. So flooding of small creeks and streams is definitely possible. As you can see, that rain extends all the way down into Cherokee County. So it will keep lifting through your area here. And we're even seeing scattered showers all the way over through East Georgia as well. In that rain, it's really going to continue even through the morning. Okay, so overnight on and off rain showers heavy at times are likely and then tomorrow we will see a rainy morning giving way to scattered afternoon thunderstorms. Not as widespread as today, but again, still a 70% chance of rain. I'm going to break down if these storms continue in your weekend and have a big update on a very active tropical situation coming up throughout the hour. All right, thank you, Ella. Meanwhile, parents in DeKalb County speaking out tonight after they say the school district served their kids rotten, disgusting food. Multiple parents actually telling CBS 46 reporter Jamie Kennedy the same exact thing, saying it's only a matter of time before a child gets sick. Amal is a DeKalb County parent who is speaking out after receiving what she says is unsafe food from the DeKalb County School District. It was like a yellow stain on the bread. It was just disgusting. They could not eat the food. Kids in DeKalb County are currently doing virtual learning but are still able to pick up food provided by the school district. Amal finding more than one not-so-delightful surprise with her kids' meals. Two of the six milks they sent were spoiled. Um, the grilled cheese sandwich was inedible. And she's not alone. A number of parents taking to social media to express similar experiences. One parent saying the milk they received came out in large, solid chunks. Another parent telling me she couldn't believe what was served up. I feel that the food that's being given out is very old because um, I received like molded fruit, mold, molded fruit in my bag for my children. Parents telling me with kids home because of the pandemic, grocery bills are going up and being able to receive these meals from the district is crucial for some families. The food being served leaving too much of a bitter taste for some parents. Now I don't trust the food at all. They are serving the children old food from the summer or before and somebody's going to get sick. I reached out to the Cab County School District and they said that they have received my email but are yet to get back to me. One of the parents forwarded me the email that they got from the district after they complained. It apologised, said that it would replace the food and that it won't happen again. But as you heard in the package there, that the parents say that the trust is now broken. In Atlanta, Jamie Kennedy, CBS 46 News. Jamie, thank you. New tonight, the FBI offering up to $10,000 for information that leads them to... Missing Georgia mother Layla Cavett. Today, they released video of the Dawsonville woman at a Hollywood, Florida gas station on July 25th. Her two-year-old son was found wandering the next morning in an apartment complex parking lot. The 38-year-old Shannon Ryan, a self-proclaimed witch, is charged with kidnapping the toddler and lying to officers. A heart condition related to COVID-19 has sidelined a Georgia state quarterback for the entire season. Michele Colasordo enrolled early to compete for the Panthers' starting job. He tweeted, Today I was diagnosed with a heart condition as a result of my COVID-19 infection. Unfortunately, this means I will not be able to play football this season. 
He went on to explain that it was the procedures and the tests that were performed at the school, Georgia State, that led doctors to the diagnosis in the first place. Last week, we told you about something called myocarditis. That's an inflammation of the heart muscle that is linked to COVID-19. Dr. Jonathan Kim, who is the chief of sports cardiology at Emory University, explains the risk for athletes. We know that myocarditis is a more common cause of sudden cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac death in athletes. And when we diagnose myocarditis in athletes, what we recommend is at a minimum three months of no high yield or high end physical training. Myocarditis is said to be one of the reasons the Big Ten and Pac-12 postponed their football seasons. ESPN reported that myocarditis was found in at least five athletes in the Big Ten. Tonight, the state of Georgia confirming 2,812 new cases of COVID-19. There are 61 deaths in the state since yesterday. That pushes the total number for the pandemic past 4,900. Tonight, we are fielding more complaints about computer bugs sabotaging remote learning in Cobb County schools. District leaders are calling the problems frustrating. A parent told CBS 46's Rob Hughes that the entire situation is demoralizing. We're spending $8 million on a platform that is not working. Tiffany Hartzell has three sons in Cobb County schools. Now four days into the school year, and she says her first grader hasn't been able to log into any of his classes. According to Cobb County Schools Superintendent Chris Ragsdale, about 6,000 of the 113,000 students in the district are still offline. It, it truly was a perfect storm, um, and, and we've identified a lot of different things that, that we need to do to remedy that. Right now, the plan is to work through the kinks and bring all Cobb County students up to speed. Meanwhile, parents like Hartzell want more options, including face-to-face -face instruction. That's what really upsets me is we just don't have a choice. Superintendent Ragsdale says he understands many parents like Hartzell want a set date for a return to in-person learning, but says it's not possible. Yes, we have to get back in school, but we have to identify those paths for us to be able to get back in school where it's safe. As Cobb County schools wait for a decline in COVID-19 metrics, families like the heart cells feel left behind by remote learning. They're disappointed. They're starting not to like school. I mean, my younger two just do not like to sit in front of a computer all day. Hartzell also told me the reason they want to have a date set for a return to school is so they can decide as a family if they even want to keep their kids in the Cobb County School District. In Cobb County, Rob Hughes, CBS 46 News. Rob, thank you. Gordon Central High School in Calhoun, Georgia, will close its campus beginning tomorrow. Students will learn online starting Monday. In a Facebook post, the school principal explained the closure this way. Quote, it was a matter of not having enough teachers in the classroom due to contract tracing exposures of being within six feet for 15 minutes or longer. End of quote. The school plans to resume face-to-face -face learning on September 2nd. Only one student has tested positive for COVID-19. Last night, we showed you this viral video of two teachers at Monroe Comprehensive High School welcoming returning students with a rap video that has since gone viral. Well, do we have a treat for you tonight. CBS 46's Barmel Lyons spoke with the Georgia teachers featured in that video. What's poppin'? These teachers and their cheer squad are adding the cool in virtual learning. So with the video, it's just something to uplift the students, uplift the teachers, and do something fun um, because it is such a gloomy time. No COVID-19, ain't worried about a thing. When in less than 24 hours of posting this What's Poppin' music video, a rework from Jack Harlow's popular song, the pair went viral. When I kept, like, seeing my phone kind of keep getting notifications and people are still sharing i was like oh my god first time um it went kind of viral <laughs> but not to the magnitude of what it's at now becoming internet sensations overnight. Director of the video, Jamal Overstreet of Overstreet Media Services. Students, if Miss Evans and Miss Williams is not your teacher, please contact your advisor. It's very exciting for them, for Miss Evans, for they just feel so good that these are their teachers. In the top, no switching position, so room number one. With Albany being one of the hardest hit spots in Georgia, the school district decided to start class 100% online, making a lot of students and teachers nervous. 
news about what's next. Together, these two teachers inspiring students to get up and get excited and see what's popping with virtual learning. Everything is going to be okay. I just wanted to motivate them that no matter your um, adversity, no matter what you go through, no matter your circumstances, you can still come out on top. Gonna log in every day. In Atlanta, I'm Barmo Lyons, CBS 46 News.